Okay, lesson P5 is all about solving equations. And we are going to cover, cover, cover multiple different ways to solve equations. We will end with the graphing calculator and how a graph can help us. But until we get there, we're going to look at some others. So example one, notice it says solving by factory. Probably when it factors nicely, I would say maybe one of the more favorite methods. I don't know. I like it. You know, it's definitely a better method there. But do you remember that how the zero factor property, zero factor product property works? Okay, so it reads, let A and B be real numbers. If A times B equals zero, then either A equals zero or B equals zero. This applies to the problems that when we can get them factored into two parentheses. Remember, once you get it into two parentheses or two factors or two or more factors, if two things multiply to equal zero, then at least one of those has to equal zero. And so we will work on that one. Now, as we look at solving the equation, 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. Notice it says by factory. What's the key here you have to check before you get started? What has to be true about this equation? Has to equal 0, yes? Okay, so just kind of a friendly reminder that in order for to use the zero factor property, the equation must equal zero, okay? So, thoughts on how to factor this one? When factoring, what should technically be your first question? Is there a GCF? Always get in that habit for GCF. Checking for a GCF. If it's a number, it can just make life better because it's smaller numbers. If it's a variable, that represents an answer. Is there any GCF here? Nope, there's not. How do we factor this? What's your thought? No? We can't put the, so Stella said put the two on the outside and split up the x's. We can't do that because that would, if we're going to put the two on the outside, that means there's a GCF of two. And there's not a GCF of two. Our brains are blank, aren't they? Can we just add the two? Nope. Or we have to leave it equal to zero? We want to leave it equal to zero. Ashley? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So remember when we factor into two parentheses, if it is just a plain x squared, we jump straight into the two parentheses, don't we? And it's killing you guys because that's what you want to do right now, isn't it? You want to just go straight to those two parentheses, all is well. But what I've taught in the past is product of AC. Okay, and then we'll find whatever numbers give us a product of AC, a sum of the middle term, which we call B, and then we'll split that. This is the one where it ends up in four terms. So, if we talk product of AC, what am I trying to get a product here? What are my A and C? Okay, 2 and negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So I need a product of negative 4 and a sum of b, which b is negative 3. So I need a pair of numbers that multiply to be negative 4 and add to be negative 3. Ross? Negative 4 and 1, he says. Works for me. I mean, multiplying to be 4 is 1 and 4 or 2 and 2. 2 and 2 is not going to give me 3 in any way, shape, or form. Multiplying to be negative 4, we need one of them negative. Adding to be negative 3, larger number negative. 
So we're going to use these two numbers here. Remember what we do with that negative 4 and 1? Split that middle term. My middle term is minus 3x, so we need to split it into negative 4x and plus 1x. Um, preferences of which way I split this. Officially doesn't matter. We'll meet in the end regardless of which way you do this. No preferences? Yeah, we'll just go with minus 4x plus 1x. Remember the first and last term you just carry down. So 2x squared carries down. Minus 2 carries down. And this still equals 0. We're still solving. Okay, so product of AC, we now have four terms. When you're factoring with four terms, split the four terms in half. So if we split the four terms in half, what is the GCF of the first half? So what is the GCF of 2x squared minus 4x? 2x. So we're going to factor out a 2x. 2x squared divided by 2x leaves me with x minus 4x divided by 2x leaves me with 2. So I have x minus 2 in those parentheses. Repeat the process. GCF of the second half. What's GCF of 1x minus 2? 1, right? Now, there has to be some GCF. Don't tell me there's not a GCF. By default, if there's no GCF in your minds, then that means the answer is 1. And you want to write that 1 down. It matters. Positive or negative 1? Positive 1. So I'm going to put plus 1 there. And then what remains if I factor out a 1? It's still the x minus 2. My equation still equals 0. You remember how to put this in two parentheses. Is it coming back to you some now? We will. Let's get them into our two parentheses first. Okay, so 2x plus 1 are my GCFs, and that's one parenthesis. My other parenthesis, my parentheses match, and that is important, and that is my other parenthesis. So I have 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 equals 0. If those parentheses don't match, this doesn't work. Okay, because what we're really doing is we're factoring out the factor of x minus 2, and then we're left with the pieces 2x plus 1. Yes. If your x minus 2s don't match here, you've got a problem. Back up and see what went astray. Okay, and now the easy part, right? Set both parts equal to 0. So 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. If it's 2x plus 1, I'm going to subtract 1. 2x equals negative 1, divide by 2, x is negative 1 half, or add 2 on the other one, x is 2. Okay, that technique sounds familiar, right? Mm -hmm. Other things to think about, looking for GCFs, okay? There could be GCFs, and if you factor out a GCF that involves an X, that means X equals 0 is going to be an answer. Also, you don't always have to use product of AC, right? If it's just a plain X squared, you can just put the, put the X's and the numbers directly into the parentheses. Okay. That's one option. Let's go for an option two. Option two down here talks about solving by extracting roots. Now, you've done this before, I promise. Okay, you have done this before. Solve by extracting roots probably doesn't sound familiar, though. Um, it's usually the idea is to solve by t uh, using square roots. 
and you've probably heard it phrased that way. So a quadratic equation is one that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a does not equal zero. Now, what you notice about this one, on the left, it's a parenthesis squared. So that is a perfect square because it is 2x minus 1, whatever that is, squared. Okay. When you have two factors of the same here, we can use our technique of square rooting both sides. This is one time where your equation does not need to equal zero. So, 2x minus 1 squared equals 9. Square root both sides. If you square root the left, you square root the right. What is the square root of 2x minus 1 quantity squared? 2x minus 1, because a square root is undoing the square. So they cancel each other out. What is the square root of 9? But I have that look on my face that I'm looking for something else. There we go. That's why Taylor kind of freaked out, like, she doesn't want three. What does she want? I'm looking for plus or minus oh, three. She goes okay. 81. Well, I thought that you wanted the I thought you wanted it squared and then square rooted, so I was like, it's going to be 81 and it's nine. Yeah, then you're just back to where you began. Yeah, right? so, I was like. Okay. So, remember, in an equation setting. Okay, this came up in Logan's pre-algebra the other day, and he was like, what, why, what, you know. So you've been doing this for a while at this point. He couldn't understand it. He didn't want to understand this. But plus or minus 3, guys, don't forget that plus or minus. When you square root in an equation setting, we have to account for both options. We're going to? Two equations. Two equations, right? Mm -hmm. One equation is a 2x minus 1 equals positive 3. Or 2x minus 1 equals negative 3. So this works really easily when it's already in that parentheses squared type setting. You can solve these, right? Add 1, 2x equals 4, divide by 2, x equals 2. Or add 1. 2x equals negative 2, divide by 2, and x equals negative 1. Probably one of our lesser used techniques, because it, this doesn't really work unless it's in the right form. However, it does lead us into our next example. In an equation setting, yes. Okay. okay. Solve by completing the square. This is one may or may not have been introduced in Algebra 1. I know it was introduced in Algebra 2 last year. Ooh. Was it introduced before we went to... Yes, it was. I had done this before we went e-learning. So, all of a sudden I thought, oh, well, please tell me I didn't have to teach this e-learning because then I know it really didn't stick with you at all, but... Okay. Now, completing the square. The idea of completing the square is we're going to take steps that's going to get our equation into a form that we can use our last set of steps. Okay? Where we have those parentheses squared. So, to solve x squared plus bx equals c by completing the square, 
you add b over 2 squared to both sides of the equation, and then you factor the left side of the new equation. Okay, so a couple of things here. First of all, the format we'll be looking for, x squared plus bx equals c. So I'm not looking for an equal zero. I want x squared and x on the left, and it's 1x squared plus bx on the left, number on the right. So then to complete the square after you do that, you'll find your b term. You'll divide by 2 and square it. And we're going to add b over 2 squared to both sides of the equation. And then we will factor the left side. Once we factor the left side, you'll know how to solve. Okay, so I'm going to write, I think I'm going to put these in like a step format here on the left. Step one, x squared plus bx equals c. That is the form we have to reach for. So, thoughts on getting this to be x squared plus bx equals c. Okay, we're going to have to get rid of the 4 and we're going to have to move the 17, yes? Both steps have to happen. In all honesty, it doesn't really matter which step you take first. Um, let's go ahead and subtract the 17 over. So if we subtract the 17 over, we now have 4x squared minus 20x equals negative 17. I hope that looks like 17, negative 17. Now, okay, you guys already know we're not quite there yet, are we? We've kind of got the x squared plus bx equals c happening, but it is very specific that we need it to be 1x squared. Not ax squared, but 1x squared. So how do we get rid of that 4? Divide. Now, if we divide that term by 4, we're dividing Everything. all terms by 4, left and right side. So notice, and this is why I said it really doesn't matter. If the 17 was still on the left, could we be dividing by 4? We can. Okay. 4x squared divided by 4 becomes x squared minus 5x. I'm anticipating my next step. I'm leaving a blank, a gap. Oh, man. You don't have to leave a gap. You can rewrite it later, but... Hey, why can't you just write it? Why can't you just write it? I'm anticipating my next step. Because we need to... We, we will need to put something in that gap. And this equals... Negative 17 fourths. Negative 17 fourths. Oh, I thought you were saying you weren't going to write that. Was... Oh, no, I am writing that. I was like, why would you not write that? Okay. So, x squared minus 5x equals negative 17 fourths. That is step one. We can check off step one is completed. Step two is going to be to add b over 2 squared to both sides. That is going to be step two. So, we're going to have to find b. Find b over 2 squared and add it to both sides. I'm going to come over to the left here. What is b? b is negative 5. Okay. So what is b over 2? B over 2 is going to be negative 5 over 2. I'm taking this in baby steps. You get the swing of it, you'll do it all at once. And so then what else do I have to do? I have to do B over 2 squared. So that means I'm going to do negative 5 over 2 squared. What is negative 5 over 2 squared? What you say? And don't go... Don't go decimals are on me. 
No, we have to. We can't. We have to square the negative five, and we have to square the two. Twenty-five over four is easiest. In other words, don't grab the calculators. Don't change them to decimals. I know you guys want to, but this is one of those times you don't want to, or I don't want you to. How's that? You still want to, but I don't want you to. So b over two squared is going to be twenty-five fourths. Now, you can normally do that all in your head if you want. I'm writing it out for when you're stuck in tonight in homework trying to complete the square and you say, how the heck did you get these? This is why I'm writing it out in as much detail as I can. Okay? <laughs> well, and I will tell you, that completing the square at the beginning of the year, this is something even my calc kids struggle to remember. Like, even though we're reviewing it right now, we're going to use it on and off all year in pre-cal. For whatever reason, it's just one of those topics that we struggle to remember. So, okay. So, we're going to add b over 2 squared to both sides, which means I'm going to take my 25 fourths and I'm going to put it right there after my 5x. If I add 25 fourths on the left, I add 25 fourths on the right. Because what I do to the left side of the equation, I must do to the right side of the equation. Question? Like where you still have to do half of it? Yeah. If you're doing half of a fraction, just multiply that denominator by two. Oh. So like if you had to do, yeah, see, I'm not going to go the calculator route. For instance, if my b had been three halves, and so you're thinking, oh, I have to do three halves divided by two. Yep, yeah, that is instead three halves times one half, which just makes it three fourths. So your b would be... This is if B was 3 halves, like if B, Shelby's question was if B yeah. is a fraction. Yeah. And then okay. you just okay. square that, right? Yeah. And then it would be, yeah. Okay. I don't know. B over 2 becomes a fraction. I don't know if B is ever a fraction today. But I'm not going to guarantee it's not. So, okay. That was step 2. Are we all caught up on step 2? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Step 3 is going to be to factor... The left side. Okay, so step three is to factor the left side. When we factor that left side, it's going to look like the left side of the problem up above, where we're looking for parentheses squared. The idea of completing the square is that this is now set that left side is going to go to a set of parentheses squared. Now, that means this is a perfect square trinomial. First term, what is the square root of x squared? x. That's your first piece in the parentheses. Last term, 25 fourths. What is the square root of 25 fourths? 5 over 2. What's my middle sign up here? Minus. So what's this? Minus. So that factors into x minus 5 halves squared, quantity squared. And to answer the upcoming question of what about that negative 5x, Mrs. Sargent, realize that negative 5x would be from multiplying your outsides and insides. And if you would have, your outsides would be negative 5 halves x. Your insides would be negative 5 halves x. When you add negative 5 halves and negative 5 halves, you get negative 10 halves, which guess what? Is negative 5. Okay? So we don't have to really think about the insides and outsides, but that's what's really happening. Go ahead and clean up the right while we're at it. What's negative 17 fourths plus 25 fourths? Eight over what? Okay, eight over four? 
So negative 17 fourths plus 25 fourths is 8 fourths, and we're going to say that 8 fourths is 2. Yeah, someone yesterday on the quiz said 2 over 1 when it should have just been 2. I took it. You know, I think I might have even taken something like 8 fourths when it's supposed to be 2. But be in that habit of reducing. It'll make life easier here. Yes? We factored. We square rooted it. We did the square root of 25 fourths, and that's the 5 halves. We're, what we're doing is we're factoring. We're factoring, it's like a, we need something that gives me a product of 25 fourths and adds to be negative 5x. Because this, this is, the design of this problem is to complete the square, so our process just works. It is not coincidence. Valid point that I forgot to point out. x minus 5 halves quantity squared. Have we seen minus 5 halves before? No. It is not coincidence. That will always match up as well. Okay? Okay. Step four is to solve. Solve this problem using our square root process, which is what we did up on example two. So I'm going to write. We just cleaned up. Okay, so I'm writing solve using square roots. Okay, the 2 was just cleaning up negative 17 fourths plus 25 fourths, which is 8 fourths. I mean, there's a common denominator, so you keep the common denominator and you add. Negative 17 plus 25 is 8. Okay, that might make a difference. Okay, solve using square roots means what am I going to do on both sides? Square root both sides. If I square root the left, square root the right. Okay, so what's the square root of x minus 5 halves quantity squared? X minus 5, x minus five halves. What's the square root of 2? Plus or minus square root of 2. If it's a perfect square, you can give me a nice neat whole number and do it. In this case, I'm not going decimals here. How do I solve for x? Okay, so if that square root of 2 was a whole number, I would say set up two equations because I want you to give me two answers that are numbers. In this case, am I going to be able to add 5 halves to a square root? No, they're going to stay separated, right? So I'm going to leave it as one equation to solve it in that if it's x minus 5 halves, you add 5 halves, right? And so how I'm going to express my answer is x equals, my preference is I'm going to put the 5 halves out front because I like my plus or minus in the middle. It just sounds better to me. And I'm going to write this as 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 2. Okay. So the reason we added that 5 over 2 is to get x by itself? Uh -huh. Just solving. Traditional solving steps. Now, do we not need to do other than the possibilities since it's plus and minus? Well, because we have the plus and minus right here, we have both the possibilities. Uh -huh. Like if I was writing out answers, one of my answers is 5 halves plus the square root of 2. The other answer is 5 halves minus the square root of 2. Yeah, that's where, and that's where I'm saying, if that square root of 2 was just a number, then yes, we would actually add and subtract and do both possibilities. But because it's a square root, I can't. Well, it's not equal to 0 here because we have a number on the right side. You're thinking of the when it's factoring. Okay? When you guys go to complete the square tonight... Practice. Try it before you come in complaining tomorrow, please. Okay? Steps are here. You've got a nice example, and it's not even an easy example. I mean, you were given fractions in your initial example here. So, please practice this. Let's just say I will take questions tomorrow. Okay. Example four. 
quadratic formula. Do you know it? I would like to think you do at this point. Okay, so solutions of quadratic, quadratic equation a squared plus bx plus c, notice it says equals zero, are given by the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So, you did hear a song about this last year. Okay, what has to be step one? What do we have to set up with this equation? Okay, what is A? What is B? Or do we count the negative Yes. B is negative six. What is C? Okay, so this is why I was kind of delaying here. We don't, we, A and B are fine, but in order to get A, B, and C, this equation has to equal zero. If it doesn't equal zero, you don't have the correct A, B, C values. So to make this equal zero, I'm going to subtract my five over, and I now have three X squared minus six X minus five equals zero, which means C is negative five. And now we plug it in and go. X equals negative B. Negative of negative six is six. Plus or minus the square root. Negative six squared. Notice I put that in parentheses. Guys, when you square a negative, you're going to get what type of number? A positive. That cost some of you guys on the quiz yesterday. Some of you guys squared a negative and still got a negative, and that cost you. So b squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 5, all over 2a, which is 2 times 3. Clean up. 6 plus or minus. So, with my little rant there, what is negative 6 squared? 36. Positive 36. And then there's a minus 4 times 3 times minus 5. Positive, because we see minus times minus. My brain says 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. That's just the way my brain works the best. You know... Maybe you paired up other numbers. Okay, all over six. Clean up under the radical. What is thirty-six plus sixty? Ninety-six. So six plus or minus the square root of ninety-six, all divided by six. Why can I not cancel those sixes right now? Because the six is connected to the numerator. If I divide the denominator six by this numerator six, I also have to divide it by square root of six. And as of right now, there's nothing outside of that square root, so I can't do that. What about that square root? Do we know the square root of 96? No, it's not a perfect square. However, are there perfect squares within it? Oh, yeah. What, is, what square root does 96 divide by? 16? Yeah. And this is where you grab the calculator and you just play, right? Which is what some of you guys have been doing already. 16 times what is 96? 16 times 6, right? Okay. So, we still have 6. Plus or minus. Now, how does this square root work? If that 96, what I wrote in there real small is 16 times 6. What is the square root of 16? 4. So that 4 goes 
out front of the radical, what's still under the radical? The 6, and then all over 6. Okay. One last cleanup. We have a 6, we have a 4 square root of 6, and we have a 6. What do all three of those terms divide by? 2. So we're going to divide each of those by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Plus or minus 4 square root of 6 divided by 2 is 2 square root of 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. This is one possible way to express your answer. Depending on the situation, they could ask for decimals, although don't count on it. Another possible way to express your answer here is to break this into two pieces. In that, 3 divided by 3 is 1, plus or minus 2 radical 6 over 3 is 2 radical 6 over 3. I am fine with either of these. It is important to be able to recognize, you know, that they are equivalent. That's helpful to know. But I'm fine with either of these. Most likely, I'm guessing you guys would leave it like the bottom one, the first one I wrote. And that's fine. Okay, now grab your calculators and we'll do what we can. We're running out of time, but I kind of have tomorrow planned that we're going to have lots of questions anyway, so. Solving graphically. You get to solve graphically with the calculator here. If you recall, notice what it says there. The solutions of an equation when given a graph are the location where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so where your graph crosses the x-axis, those are your solutions. So to do this, right here it mentions using the trace feature. I'll actually show you two options of how to do this. Um, if I can get them both in today, that's great. If not, tomorrow. Solve the equation x cubed minus x minus 1 equals 0 graphically. Graphically means we're going to graph it. Now, notice my equation is already equal to 0, yes? That's a good thing because what we're going to do is we're going to plug in to our calculators the re related graph y equals x cubed minus x minus 1. That's what you're graphing. Okay. So, I don't know how much we remember on these lovely calculators. First of all, Y equals button brings up the screen where you type stuff in. Type in your equation. Now, X to the third. Do you remember where X is? It's that X, T, theta, N button. So we hit X. The exponent button is over above divide. Can you find it? It's that arrow. On mine, it makes it real nice and puts it up there. So x to the third. To get out of that exponent button, or out of the exponent, I arrowed, I hit the arrow right button. And I did minus x minus 1. Hit enter. And you can go ahead and graph. Hello? I do. I will send them a passing period. Uh -huh. Parking permit, Levi. Officer Franklin has it. Okay. Now, you can graph. I have no idea what I last graphed. So a good habit to be in is if I don't know what I last graphed or if my window's all goofy, I'll do a zoom and six is the standard. And then that gives me a nice 10 by 10 graph. Does your graph look like mine? I hope so. Okay. How many solutions am I going to have here?
Where does it say solutions are? Where we cross the x-axis. Okay? So, one option to get these answers. My trace button. See my trace? Look what I can do. I hit trace. It gives me a cursor. I can move over. If you look right here between when my y value is negative versus positive, I know it's between 1.21 1 1 and 1.36. Is that a precise answer? Not really. So what the book is suggesting is that we zoom in. So leave me my cursor where it is. You see the zoom button here? And I'm going to hit zoom. Number two is zoom in. If you hit enter, it takes it there. And it's asking you, do you want to zoom in? If I hit enter again, notice now it's a lot closer. And I can hit trace and I can zoom in as many times. Like now I'm between 1.28 and 1.32. Am I getting more precise? And we can keep zooming in. Remind me to show you another yeah, technique yeah, tomorrow. Yes, plan on the homework due tomorrow, but I will also put in to take questions. Okay, so work through the homework. 2 through 34 evens. On 2, 4, and 6, it probably says check graphically. Don't. Just factor. No, Officer Franklin Middle School. He has your parking permit. <laughs>